Hello everyone, happy Saturday, welcome to my channel, and thanks for tuning into this video today. It's been two weeks since I uploaded a video, it's just been a hectic last couple of weeks um, in January, and I'm happy to be back here to be talking to you guys. And I wanted to wish all my female viewers out there who are watching today a happy National Women Physicians Day. I decided to wear my pink suit, as I love pink and it is a very feminine color, so I thought that I would wear that today in light of the holiday? I guess it's not really a holiday, but um, the special day. So today I decided that I would make a video that I haven't made before, uh, but I recently hit the 5,000 subscriber mark, which is super awesome. Thank you all so much for subscribing and watching my videos and tuning in every week and giving my videos likes and leaving some nice comments. Um, it really is so nice of you guys. Uh, but now that I have a bigger audience and I'm getting so many new subscribers every week, I thought that I should um, introduce myself and talk a little bit about myself and how I became interested in medicine and how I ended up where I am uh, right now at a Caribbean medical school. Although, um, if you just joined, I'm not actually in the Caribbean right now. I'm living in Chicago for my third year clerkships. So let's just jump into it and go all the way back to high school, back when I wasn't even thinking about medicine at all. So in high school, I was a pretty average student. I didn't do extremely well. I wasn't at the top of my class, but I also wasn't at the bottom of my class. I was usually a pretty average B student uh, with some A's tossed in there and the odd C maybe once a term. Um, or once every couple of terms. And both of my parents are in the medical field. My mom is a nurse practitioner and my dad is a respiratory therapist. So I grew up um, kind of being surrounded by people in the medical field and I knew that both my parents really loved their jobs and they were always excited for me pursuing a career um, in the same field if I wanted, but they never really pressured me to do anything like, uh, like them. It was always kind of a matter of doing what I wanted as long as I could be able to support myself and get a good education. Now throughout high school I found that I excelled in the more artistic courses so I found that I was really good at writing, um, I liked my arts classes, I did a lot of like TV and film and photography classes in high school which we were fortunate enough to have. Uh, I was in the choirs and I was just like a total artsy kid. And I managed to make my way through math and I did some chemistry and uh, that's pretty much it. I was never a science kid, I never excelled in math in those courses. I think I dropped out of my physics and chemistry 12 classes because at that point I just knew that I wasn't going to go in to a career in the sciences so I didn't really try that hard. And so by the time the applications came around for universities uh, at the beginning of grade 12, I had decided that I would apply for schools to study communications and or journalism. And so at the end of grade 12, I had gotten accepted into Carleton University in Ottawa, Ontario, and that is where I did my undergraduate degree studying communications. And so up until this point, I had been pretty sure that I wanted to pursue some type of career, either writing, being a reporter, or a news writer, <clears throat> or even doing some type of broadcast journalism. So the first year went by and I was really loving my classes and I was doing well and this felt like the right thing for me. And then when second year came around, I started to experience uh, some health issues as far as depression and anxiety goes. And I had gone through my whole life not really knowing much about mental illness. I didn't know much about depression or anxiety. I just thought it was kind of like a mind over matter type of thing. And <clears throat> I don't remember ever having any authority or authoritative figure in high school teaching us about any type of mental illness or what you're supposed to do if you have these feelings. So when all of this started happening for me, I was really confused and I didn't really know what was going on. And it was like a very stressful kind of dark time for me. And so second year was a struggle for me trying to figure out um, how I wanted to manage my health and if I wanted to see a doctor or if I could just manage this myself, would uh, my symptoms go away? and it took a while for me to figure out that I needed to go to the doctor. And I actually shared my experience about this on my Twitter feed. I had a thread of like 25 tweets or something where I go into detail talking about this whole process if you wanna read more about my experience um, with depression, anxiety, and figuring out how I wanted to be a doctor. Um, but I'm just gonna talk about it further in, in more detail for the rest of this video. But eventually I did go to my doctor and I went to my doctor on the Carlton campus and her name was Dr. Bowen and she was an amazing physician and she was so compassionate and she listened to me and didn't make me feel like I was being ridiculous, which I totally felt like I was. 
Um, she made sure that I understood what was going on. She did all the workups and really calmed my fears as to what I was feeling and explained that this was something that could be treated um, either with therapy or with medication and that I would be able to essentially get better. And so my experience with her was so amazing that I just remember thinking after all those visits with her that I wanted to be like her and I wanted to be able to help people the way that she had helped me um, because I really don't think that I would be where I am today without her um, and at the time I did not feel like I would have reached the level of um, mental health that I did reach without her help and her guidance and her comfort. And so this was a bit further into the future. So I had made it through second year without really doing much um, to help my symptoms. And then it was at the beginning of my third year of university that things started to kind of uh, take a downward turn and I was doing really poorly in my classes and I had dropped some classes and I just was not doing so well. And that's when I decided, okay, I think that I need to take a semester off and just kind of recover and set my priorities straight and figure out what it is that I want to do with my life as well as just kind of get better. So then I went home to Vancouver to live with my parents for a while and I got a job working at the PR company that I had interned at the summer before and I worked there for six months. It was a great company. Um, I learned a lot and it was a really fun experience and I really got to see what it would be like um, working in the field that I was kind of studying to be in one day. But also at the same time I had kind of become more aware of all of the mental illness that had been surrounding me that I had been so blind to for so long. I knew, I found out about friends who were struggling with depression. I found out about um, suicides in families that I knew of and I found out about people who had tried to commit suicide and I found out about all these people who were just having all these um, issues with their mental health that I just never expected and it all became very apparent to me that this was something that I wanted to learn more about. So my own experience combined with the experiences that I was hearing about from other people um, and also just thinking about uh, my doctor that I had who was so helpful to me during a period where I really needed someone um, made me kind of think that I didn't want to be in the field that I was in right now. Um, I didn't really see how I could help people the way that I now wanted to help people which would be um, kind of in the health field. And so it was all during this kind of six month period that I realized that I wanted to become a doctor and it was just like that. I just had this feeling like this is what I needed to do. I felt like medicine was calling to me and sometimes people ask me why I didn't just pursue a career in psychology if I was so interested in mental health and I just had also heard so many stories of people uh, not really having a good, uh, good relationship with their medical provider, uh, people who were getting medications for their depression that weren't working. Um, or not having, uh, not feeling like they were heard from their psychiatrist and, or from their therapist. And I just decided that if I was gonna do anything in that field that I wanted to be in control of my patient's medications as well as their non-pharmacologic therapy like counseling. And then on top of that, I liked the idea of also being able to get an education in general medicine and being able to see if there was anything else in the field that I would be interested in, interested in helping people as far as the physical and mental aspect of their bodies. So that's how I became interested in medicine and really it kind of spiraled from there. I found out about international medical schools. My mom was actually the one who forwarded me the link to the school that I'm at right now. And as you guys have heard me mention before, um, I was pretty uneducated about what my options were. At that point, I thought that I needed to have a four-year undergraduate degree in biology or some type of science. And I knew that I had to take the MCAT and I thought that if I wanted to do medical school, I was gonna have to do a full four years of school again, which is completely not true. And looking back, I do wish that I had done more research on all the 50 other med uh, Caribbean medical schools that actually exist, and then the medical schools abroad that aren't on North America, and then also just done research as far as um, being able to apply to Canadian or American schools. But all of that being said, this was stuff that I didn't know about. Back then there were no YouTube videos that I knew of about international medical students, which again is why I started this channel. And so I kind of just rolled with what I got and I reached out to the school that I had found um, and asked them about what I would need to do in order to get in and when I would be able to get in and all this stuff. So long story short, well this is already a long story, um, but I went back to school that semester, finished my undergraduate degree in communications and I ended up taking a prerequisite course 
a couple of prerequisite courses in anatomy, physiology, and neuroscience, which I aced all of them, and I was uh, felt really good about that because that was kind of my tester experience for how I would actually be able to handle um, the course load in medical school. And so by the time I had graduated, I had already been accepted into the school that I'm at right now, and the rest is history because I have been making these videos for two years now, and I started in my first year of medical school. So that is how I got to where I am today, and I just thought that I've made a lot of videos on this channel, but I hadn't actually really told you guys how I got to the place that I'm at right now. And so I hope that was interesting to you. If you are new and you are just meeting me, it's very nice to have you here. And I would just like to offer a piece of advice if you are watching and you are kind of in the transitional phase like I was, either in the middle of studying journalism and deciding you want to go into the sciences or if you're actually in the sciences but now you want to do medicine, whatever it is, I would just say that if you have a gut feeling in your stomach like you want to do medicine and you feel like it's calling to you, I would definitely do it and do whatever it takes to be able to get there. Just make sure you do your research, watch those videos I've made on uh, what to expect when applying to Caribbean medical schools, what I wish I knew when applying to Caribbean medical schools, and um, my FAQ video, those are all really helpful videos um, that'll be useful for you in the process. And I will either link those up above with the little card that pops up or I will put them in the description, description box below for you guys to have them um, at easy clickable access. But other than that, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or if you want to learn more um, about me or just life as a medical student. And I will definitely keep putting up videos regardless of what you decide to do. Um, and leave a comment if there's anything else you would like to know about me or if you'd like me to make any other videos like this. I'm not sure if this will be very interesting for you guys or not, uh, but I'd love to hear your feedback. And with that being said, I will see you next week and I will most likely be giving you a review of my pediatric rotation because I am already in my last week starting on Monday. How crazy is that? It's just crazy. All right, have a good one guys. Thanks for watching again. Bye.